hey, look, there's a new poster now. You can see that lamp. But don't worry, this poster is eventually going to go over there and a different one's going to go over here because I only have three frames and I need four frames and it's really frustrating. Anyway, first up is Bill and Ted Face the Music, the much-awaited third quill of the Bill and Ted series. This movie stars Keanu Reeves, my fifth Keanu Reeves movie, Alex Winter. Kristen Scar, so we'll say that, Samara Weaving, Bridget Lundy, something, I don't know. Anyway, this movie's wonderful. I was really surprised by how much I enjoyed it. Um, really, if, it, if you like the first two Bill and Ted movies, you're going to love this one. It's really just like a love letter to the other Bill and Ted movies. And it's just like a nice, pleasant, good, wholesome, fun time. Like, you're not going to be blown away by any of the plot stuff. It's not incredible, amazing, but it's nice. It, it, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel happy. You're just like, yeah, this is, this is good. This is good stuff. Keanu and Alex just naturally go back into the roles. Um, and then seeing their daughters is really fun. They feel unique and on their own. Um, but, you know, still related. Um, the babes actually do something in this movie, which I was so excited to see. Apparently, though, um, they had, like, way more plot, but the, they just didn't have any money to make this movie. They had no money to make this movie, so, like, they had to cut more of that stuff. But they still did do more stuff in this movie than they did in the other movies, so I'm, I'm still happy about that. Um, my favorite character is probably this robot. Um, it's, it's played by the bald dude from Barry, and he's just, he's wonderful in it. Um, so yeah, it's just, if you want to feel good and love life, it's just, this is the movie for you. I was, I guess the one thing I was kind of disappointed by was the music. I was expecting to really love um, some of the songs. Um, I like the song at the beginning of the movie, um, when they're at a wedding. That one was great. I wasn't a huge fan of the last one, but that's kind of not the point of it. So yeah, you like Bill and Ted? It's a good Bill and Ted movie. Watch it. It's wonderful. Yeah. Now on to The Flintstones. This is a 1994 movie starring John Goodman, Elizabeth Perkins, Rick Moranis, Rosie O'Donnell, Kyle MacLachlan, Halle Berry, holy shit, and Elizabeth Taylor. Um, this is, it's such a simple, uh, pleasant, harmless kids movie. Um, I apparently remembered the entire plot of this movie, or it's just a really simple, predictable movie. One of the two. Uh, but basically, it's like an episode of Flintstone, Flintstones, just really long and a little bit more complicated. Um, and it was fine. It was, it was just, you know, it's a kid's movie. It is what it is. I love the aesthetic of this movie, like all of the fake stone stuff. I just, it was a, a, just enjoyable for some reason. Um, and it looked like John Goodwin was having a good time. I like it when serious actors do kids movies and actually enjoy it they're not just doing it for a paycheck they're doing it you know because it's 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 still entertainment for some people uh, i think the characters i love the most though were kyle mclaughlin and halle berry their evil stuff was just great and halle berry is just oh my god she is ridiculously beautiful in this and I remember how I said before, like a few weeks ago, about however, who needs to play the new Storm needs to be an African goddess. Yeah, I understand why Halle Berry was cast as Storm the first time, because holy shit, she is an African goddess in this. It's, wow. But yeah, it's pleasant, it's fine. Don't expect anything amazing. Uh, if you watched it as a kid, maybe give it a watch now, but maybe be drunk or something, because it's, it's just so simple. Um, but yeah, it's fine. Um, I mean, you guys, if you have kids and they like the Flintstones, this is probably a good watch because it does do like all your favorite bits, like the um, bowling thing and all the silly animals and stuff, dinosaurs. Um, so yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I liked it. And lastly is Mr. Roosevelt. This is a 2017 movie written, directed, starring and executive produced by Noelle Wells. She was on SNL. I didn't know who she was. Uh, the reason I wanted to watch this movie, I was actually going to click on something else, but then um, the poster looked interesting, and then I went to see its uh, Rotten Tomato score, and the consensus of the critics grabbed my attention. It said, uh, where is it? Uh, this film is an existential exploration of an entire generation through the microcosm of one woman's relationship with her cat. And I was like, that sounds amazing. It's going to be out about a woman and her cat, and it's like, yeah, it's not about that at all. She literally says at one point that it's not about that because it really isn't about it. It's about her relationship with her ex-boyfriend and how she feels guilty about leaving him to pursue a career in something. She doesn't even know what her career is. Also, it's really just a love letter to Austin. It's all about the city of Austin, Texas. 
Like, I think this is like, if Austin, Texas was a movie, that's what this movie would be. It's, 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 and it's just not good. It feels like a student film that just never ends and just keeps going. And just the acting's not good, and the, the cinematography is not good. You can, it's super incredibly grainy, and I don't know if like it was intentional or they just wanted everything to look kind of pixelated or whatever. Um, it was momentarily funny every now and again. But you no, know, what it did, it, I will give it credit, it held my attention, but it's really because there were just lots of pretty actors in it. And there was one who was like, oh, she's really pretty. And I was like, oh, she showed back up again. Oh, she's here again. Oh, she's here again. Nice. Oh, she's topless. Whoa, what's going on? All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, it's not a good movie. If this was made by like a group of like 18 to 20 year olds, I would have been like, oh, this is really good. But no. Noelle Wells made this movie well after her time on SNL, so like, she had Hollywood connections. It shouldn't be super amateurish like it is. And it's just, also don't call her quirky, because that's sexist or something. I don't know, she has a big rant on it, even though she's like trying her best to be her uh, Zoe Deschanel, and it's just like, okay, whatever. It's just, man, the more I talk about it, the more I'm like, I put it in meh. Actually, I originally put it in liked, because I was like, well, the pretty purple maybe put it in liked. But then I started thinking about it more, and I was like, no, it's a meh movie. But now as I'm doing this review thing, I'm like, maybe I just didn't like this movie at all. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's not good. I'm not a fan. Oh, wow. No, well, well, I hate her name.